Hey, we're back um, with uh, more of the Rubank Elementary Method for Clarinet. Lesson four this time. Uh, we did lesson four last time. Uh, lesson three last time. So remember, uh, we're still working with quarter notes and quarter rests. And remember, hand position is really important. This is not allowable. Uh, because sometimes, as, as you as, as you as you saw in the video I did on clarinet hand position, how important it is. Oh, and if that's not showing up here somewhere, um, I want that 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 to show up um, in the description box. I'll, I'll write that link in the description box. It's a very short video. You can you mean you you, you can go see that. All right. Um, so we're going to. Learn a new note. I don't believe in new notes, but we're going to learn another note um, on, our, on our clarinet that requires our left hand. So it's going to be really, actually, two more notes that require our left hand. So it's going to be really important that we have our hand in the correct place. All right. All right. Let's go to um, lesson four, exercise one. It has a low A in it. Low A is fingered, as you can see in the diagram, one covering the first, second, third, Fourth hole, fifth hole, and the thumb. The T, and then one, two, three, four, five. And in some books, it's one, two, three, one, two. But it's the, but that's the fingering. Okay? Here we go. Whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. One, two, ready? <laughs> Exercise one, lesson four. If I'm playing too fast for you, what do you do? Stop the, then, and then, that's exactly right. Stop the video, practice, and then come back. All right, uh, we're going to do a two-liner. And, and we have, and there's a lot of two-liners in this book, so we're going to be really, really careful about when we're looking at it, what we're looking at. We're looking for the double bar to be the end of the exercise. On lesson four, uh, there's, it's a two-liner, and we're going to breathe after every how many measures? Or, uh, or how many measures? Our goal is to breathe after how many measures? But if we can't, then we'll breathe after how many measures? Very good. All right, number two, exercise two, lesson four. One, two, ready? <laughs> We breathe after every two measures or after every four measures. And you want to know where that is and you want to plan that so you do it every single time, right? So it's not random. And that makes uh, your breath, your air support and your breath control a lot fast, a lot better, a lot faster. All right, number uh, exercise number three, lesson four. Um, now we're going to go back and forth between the A, the G and the A. Now remember... What, when, we, when we first learned this back in lesson one, we're just going to use the side of our finger here to play the A. It's in this position here, and we're just going to roll up a little bit, just a little bit. Can you, let's see if I can isolate it. You see how little that is? It's just a little bit. Just enough to make the key come up. Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up and put it there. It's not like that. Don't do that. 
Just roll it over. Just roll it up a little bit. Roll it up a little bit. Roll it up a little bit. Roll it up. Roll it back. So we're going from G, which is open, to A. So it's going to stay here. You see how little how little motion that is. It's not very it's not very much mo. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not very much motion at all. Not at all. All right. Let's do let's do um, lesson uh, lesson four, uh, exercise three. One, two, ready. <laughs> enough. If I'm going too fast, you know what to do. Exercise number four, lesson number four. Rhythm is one, two, three, one, two, three. Quarter notes get one count, half notes get how many? Say it. Very good, two counts in four, four times. Here we go, number four. One, two, three, go. Got to make sure you breathe every two measures or every measures. That's very good. All right, number five, lesson four. Number five, lesson four. Number five, lesson four. Here we go. And most of that rhythm is the opposite. In number four, we had short, short, long, short, short, long. Now we're going to do it backwards. Long, short, short, long, short. Short, right? All the way up to the A. One, two, one, two, ready, go. <laughs> Number six is very similar, so we're gonna. But now we've got some quarter rests. Well, pop in there, one in the middle and one at the very end. Of, one at the very end that we don't have to worry about. But we have a quarter rest in number six, exactly in the in the spot where we might take a breath. How convenient is that? Awesome. Here we go. Number six. One, two, ready. <laughs> that. All right, number seven. Number seven, we have a note that we haven't learned before, and it's G. G. We've learned the middle G, which is the open G. Now we're going to learn the low G. Low G. And, it's, and you can tell by the chart, it's fingered with the thumb, the T, and here, 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 and here. All the fingers are covered. The only people we have free are our thumbs, our pinkies. Everybody else has got a responsibility. Now, one of the things that, we, that I've got to tell you, when you start playing like that G, we have to make sure that our fingers are covering the holes. Okay? Because when we do... When you play the G, our fingers have a tendency to want to get closer together. We have to make sure they stay, cover the holes. So you can see the little circle on your finger. little circle from the, from the tone hole. Okay? 
the G. The G sounds like this. Me, G. Okay. Here we go. Number seven. Half notes, quarter notes, half note, whole notes. Here we go. One, two, ready? <laughs> Again, if I'm going too fast, you know what to do. And it's really important that we move the air fast, and we're really important that we cover the holes. Now, one of the tricks is making sure that our fingers never get too far away. Technically, they don't have to be any further. You see the rings? You see how that comes up right there? They don't have to be any further away than that. This is, this is not what you want. That is bad. You want them to be close like this. Not like this. Close like that. Okay? Cool. All right, let's do number eight. Number eight goes all the way to the next line, but only two measures in the next line. So it's kind of a two-liner, but not really. All right, let's do number eight. Number eight and lesson four. Here we go. One, two, ready? <laughs> Now we're at lesson not excuse me, exercise number nine. Ready? It goes on to the next line too. So we're gonna do that, and it's mostly quarter notes until you get to the end. Remember what I said before. When you're sight reading or you're reading something off reading music, look at the note that you're playing. Do not try to look ahead to see what's coming up. Once you play the note, then move on to the next one. And the next one. And the next one. Okay? That makes sense? Of course it does. Because I said it. <laughs> All righty. When we're playing something, when we're loading something that goes fast, the best way is to learn it slowly. So we're going to do number nine twice. I'm going to do it up to tempo, and then I'm going to do it at the learning tempo. Okay? Here we go. Up to tempo. One, two, ready? <laughs> you're going to say, dang, that was really fast, Willie. Why are you playing it so fast? But you are not going to learn it that fast. You're going to learn it at the learning tempo. Okay? Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the speed you're going to learn it so you can play it faster now the difference is where you're going to breathe at the learning tempo you're going to have to breathe more often at the um, the quick tempo you won't have to breathe as often you may even you may be able to get to the whole thing in one breath maybe probably all right let's do the last exercise uh, on lesson four, exercise 10 on lesson four. We're going to do that two ways too. We're going to do that at the 
performance tempo, which is what we'll call it, and the practice tempo. Okay? Performance tempo and the practice tempo. All right, let's do the performance tempo first. Wish me luck. One, two, ready? <laughs> <laughs> so fast. Why are you playing so fast? That's the performance tempo, a tempo that you might perform in front of people with, right? Now, the practice tempo is much slower. The practice tempo is different. Let's play the practice tempo. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> And that's the learning tempo or the practice tempo. Now, you start at a practice tempo and you may speed it up a little bit and speed it up a little bit and speed it up a little bit and speed it up a little bit until you get to the performance tempo. Okay? Well, that was lesson four. How'd you do? If you didn't do really good, go back and do it again. You've got, you've got your whole life. There's no hurry. Go back and do it again. My name is Willie. This is the Saxophone Factory here on YouTube. Until we see you again, go out there and keep playing. Just keep playing. It's going to be okay. Thanks so much.